not what it is that has made people come back to see him in this film time after time after time. Today, Patrick Swayze has every reason to be sitting tall in the saddle. After years of struggling, this 35-year-old Texan has become a hot property in Hollywood, and it all came about with some dirty dancing. He exploded on the screen in one of this year's biggest movies, playing Johnny Castle, a dance instructor who was socially clumsy but physically graceful. And his dance sequences with co-star Jennifer Grey created a sensation around the country. The style was pure Gene Kelly. The sexiness was pure Patrick Swayze. Dirty dancing left audiences wondering where did this actor come from? And where on earth did he learn to dance like that? The answer is he didn't start out as an actor at all. From the time he could walk, Patrick Swayze was taking dance lessons in his hometown of Houston. His mother was a dance instructor and choreographer there, and Patrick was one of the stars in her class. From his mother, he got his passion for dance, and from his father, he got his love for horses and the outdoors. In his family, second best was not enough, and Patrick did not stop at dance. He excelled at every sport, track, gymnastics, and football. It was while he was playing football that he badly injured his knee. It was an injury that would later haunt his dance career. He went to New York, where he joined the Joffrey and Harkness dance companies. But soon his injuries forced him to stop dancing, and he then turned to acting. His first big break came in the Broadway musical Grease, replacing John Travolta. And he soon was on his way to Hollywood where he appeared in a teenage movie called Skate Town, USA, which gave him reviews comparing him to Rudolph Valentino and, oh yes, John Travolta. But Patrick decided not to go the route of a teenage idol. He chose instead to push for films like The Outsiders and the television miniseries North and South. It wasn't until Dirty Dancing, however, that it finally paid off. Patrick's retreat from the fast life of Hollywood is here in his California ranch, nestled in the foothills of the San Gabriel Mountains. He calls it Rancho Bizarro. And Patrick, who used to work as a carpenter during the lean years, is renovating it throughout, with cathedral ceilings and cedar beams in the living room. This is a man who is still very much a Texas cowboy. Oh. Got it. She used to do this as a kid? Uh-huh. Yeah? Along you make, with you the make dancing? A good cow hand. But you're the first one who's ever said that to me. He loves horses. Not only Western ones right. that he works, but also Arabian stallions. Good boy, Trot. But horses aren't the only inhabitants yeah. here. There are peacocks, cats, and his prize dogs. <laughs> Swayze is a man who does everything with passion and intensity. To prepare for a role in his next film, he spent hours learning kickboxing and doing weight training. And it takes an enormous amount of discipline and bodybuilding to deal with his newest pupil. Well, if you were with Patrick Swayze, what would you ask for? A cooking lesson? He said, let's try the mambo. Okay, no rehearsal, but what a teacher. I feel it, feel it, they go into my shoulders. <laughs> Good. Good. Hey, look at me. <laughs> you pick up fast. You're wonderful. Thank you. Oh, well, we all have our fantasies. But this lovely creature is the reality. Patrick's partner in life, his wife, actress-dancer, Lisa Niemi. They first met in his mother's dance studio more than 15 years ago and have been married for 12. It was the dance studio that served as the backdrop for two of the biggest influences in Patrick's life, 
his wife, and his mother. And when we sat down to talk, I asked him about both. Tell me about your mother. She taught you to dance. Yeah, yeah. And uh, she taught me what the, the meaning of discipline was, in, in, you know, in, in a good way, that you, that you can't waltz through life. You know, you can't expect things to be handed to you on a silver platter, that you've got to work for it and um, be deserving. But when you were a little kid and your mother said, I'm going to take you in and put you in the dancing studio, in Texas, little boys didn't dance. No, ma'am. Okay. <laughs> How'd you feel about it? Well, I started so young. You didn't know. No, I, yeah. I, I didn't know. I mean, I'm watching and see what all the other kids were doing and, and wanted to do it. I'm, you know, so I've got pictures of me in sailor suits and tap shoes from the time I, I was knee-high to a grasshopper. And people, everybody tells me I was a little terror. Uh, when mother would be trying to teach, I'd be hanging on the bars, pinching the girls and stuff. And uh, at, the so age, was, at the age of four? <laughs> you know, four to eight, I guess. or well, Actually, probably four to 18. I was still pinching girls at 18. I, I thought I was Mr. Casanova, you know, out of insecurity. Tell me about your father. Here was your mother, ran the dance studio, wanted her kid to dance. How'd your father feel about it? I always sensed uh, that he was real scared uh, on a certain level, even though he knew different. Scared I would turn gay. Um, there was still, you know, because he, you know, he, he was a Texas cowboy. Um, part of him didn't understand this stuff. Well, when you're living in Texas, yeah. Okay, and and the other kids are going off, uh, you know, to play the sport, or whatever, the football, the baseball, and you've got your ballet shoes and your tights. Did you ever have to, you know, prove that you were a real Texas kid? I, I, on a, one way or, or another, I've I've spent my life proving that. Mm -hmm. uh, I uh, got beat up over and over and over again when I was little, and um, uh, that wasn't too good. And then it started, started on a whole uh, process of learning what walking around with a chip on your shoulder means. I'm a ballet dancer, what of it, you know? And then I woke up one day and realized, you know, that I was becoming the very thing I hated. When was this? About 20, after I'd, after I'd gone to New York. So I went to New York, and I was the macho, you know, I'm, that was, that was my whole thing. That's what made me... I'm a macho ballet dancer. Yeah. I'm not like the rest of you. Yeah. When did dancing become a passion? When I really, truly committed myself to be a dancer was when the world, doctors, and my mother told me I couldn't do it after my knee was destroyed. For a few years, I had uh, just about an operation a year. Because of the bad knee? Three, four years. Yeah. yeah. And kept dancing. And kept dancing. So even though everybody see you, sees you as this superb dancer and dirty dancing, you know that that it's tough, that you really can't do everything that easily. No, no, I've become a master at compensation. If you watch me in slow motion, you'll see me take all the pressure, all the weight with that right leg. Those years in New York, what was the worst time? I, I kept going to doctors and found out that I had a staph infection, had to go in the hospital, and, and they had a week in which to try to save the leg, and if they didn't save it within a week, they'd have to take it off at the hip. And um, the biggest thing that the knee did was, I thought all I was was this, you know, and with this. The dancer, this, yeah, the, the, body. the dancer, the athlete, the, the, the machine, not a person. Um, you said it changed you, that you'd always thought up until then me. that you were the body, and now maybe there was a mind? I had to find out. Up to that point, I was scared to look inside for fear that I, that I wouldn't find anything, you know, yeah. that, that I'd be, my, my fears would be proven right. The dancing was over, the acting begins. You come out here, your first film that I, I that caused a lot of uh, attention was Skate Town USA, right? And you got that review that said he's the sexiest thing since Travolta and then Valentino, Valentino and, honest, and yeah. so on. And then, not much. I disappeared. Deliberately walked away because, uh, you know, it just scared me because it was. It was a teen idol kind of thing, and, and teen magazines were jumping in my face, and I had a four-picture deal offered in six other films, and, and... And you felt you couldn't do it? I didn't... I hadn't been studying all my life to throw it down the drain by becoming a face, the very thing I was scared I was anyway. A face and a tight pair of jeans. Yeah, yeah. and um, I was willing to, to bank on that with enough study and enough growth and enough, you know, connection with myself and the truth in, in me, that I could become an actor to be reckoned with, an actor with respect and not, you know, a personality. But what courage? You turn around and say, I'm going to become a real actor. It really... I mean, that takes a lot of guts. It's like something my manager said, is most people come to L.A. and get off the plane and that's as good as they ever get. Yeah. And Lisa and I have had a passion never to let that happen. So tell me about Lisa. 
Uh, she literally is my creative partner. There, there just feels like there's a real power between us. It feels like there's a real chemistry, like, like, like we're soulmates, if you believe in that kind of thing, that, that we either knew each other before and came together in another life. There's just some intense passion because our fights are huge, and, uh, but our love is huge. Now, this huge success, Dirty Dancing, did you know that Dirty Dancing was going to be the breakthrough? No, I didn't. I knew that I was, I was advised not to do it. Why? Just it, in the reading of it, if you didn't really look behind, between the lines. You were just a sexy dancer. Yeah, it was, yeah. Just, it was a cute little, cutesy little movie that, you know. So why'd you do it? I felt something for Johnny, a guy from the streets. Johnny Castle, yeah. Yeah, uh, a guy from the streets that, that is fighting to, to, to like himself, to, to believe in himself, to believe he could be something more than what society will allow him to or what mommy and daddy taught him he could be or whatever, you know. Um, I just felt like I, I could do something with this guy. Why do you think people go to see it five times, ten times, twenty times? There is um, the Hundred Plus Club for Dirty Dancing. Women that have seen it in movie theaters, not on video, in movie theaters over a hundred times. Why? Everybody dreams that somebody would see into their lonely world with the, that would see past the exterior and see what they're really like. They may not be the pretty people of the world, but big deal. Somebody sees through that and cares about them as a person. And I think that's the biggest thing that this film communicates is, is, is a relationship, not because of, you know, how somebody swings their rear, but what's inside. Today, do you have a philosophy by which you live? Passion, quality, integrity, and uh, the things that my mommy and daddy taught me about being a Southern gentleman, Patrick, your father died in 1982. This, I have read, uh, was terribly difficult for you. It wasn't just something that you could accept. Uh, <sighs> uh, I just, I'm, I, I love that man. That, um, you caught me off guard, I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, he, uh, my dad and my manager, Bob Lamont, the two most important men in my life are dead. And I made it after my father died. My passion. The, that I was gonna make that man proud of me till I died. Everything he wanted for me, everything he dreamed about. No, he never got to know. <laughs> you made him proud. Oh, Jesus. Well, that was his problem. He thought crying was weak. <laughs> Texas mentality. Uh, uh. Have you made him proud, do you think? I think so. I think the one thing I really wish he could have known is he never got to know that, that, he never got to know that uh, Lisa and I get in this horse business and everything. I always had the dream that, that I'd buy a ranch. And uh, he'd run it, you know? And part of my passion for horses is to honor my father. Hmm. I can't think of, of any more wonderful, wonderful, loving compliment that you could give him than the way you feel. You know, for the person who has not seen Dirty Dancing, whoever that may be, and who does not know Patrick Swayze and is meeting you tonight for the first time, what do you want them to know about you? I've always had this problem with wanting to be liked, you know? Uh, that I'm a good actor, that, that I'm someone to be reckoned with, that, that, that I can give them people something through my work that they see, they, you know, they make their lives lighter for a moment or inspired or, or passionate about who they are and feeling good about themselves. And I can definitely swing my butt. <laughs>